Hello friends, my name's James. And this is my 1965 Alberg 30 Sloop SV Tritea. We're on a mission to sail around the world and see as much of this beautiful planet as possible. On this season, we're working our way through New Zealand. I want to share with you all the magic that is Aotearoa. Hello friends, I've been back in New Zealand about a month now. I'm here at Whangarei Town Basin. Um, been knocking out tons and tons of boat projects. Trying to get everything done that I can while I'm at the dock. It's much easier to do projects on the dock. Um, and I'm stoked that I'm still here actually because the inaugural Whangarei Maritime Festival is happening this weekend. <clears throat> so it's gonna be really cool. Uh, there's a ton of old gorgeous Kiwi boats that are showing up. Some have already started getting on the dock across from me. And um, the Tucker is going to be showing up tomorrow. And there's just tons of beautiful boats that are going to be seen. There's going to be speaking events, some like shanty bands and shanty choirs. And um, yeah, two days of really cool maritime themed activities. So stoked to still be here for that. Um, and then I plan on leaving beginning of next week, so looking forward to getting back out in the wild <clears throat> and uh, seeing more of New Zealand. <laughs> um, so, tell us your name. Hey, I'm Kara. And you helped organize this whole thing, or you? Yeah, were... yeah, yeah. So, how did it happen? How did this? You were telling me the other day. Yeah, so it started last year with a couple of um, guys that lived in the marina from mm -hmm. America, and they rafted up about six boats down the end there, mm -hmm. and then they had a really good reaction. So this year they said, "Why don't you? Uh, why don't we do it again?" And I said, mm -hmm. "Why don't we make it massive?" And yeah. let's just do talks about nautical things and, and music and markets, nautical markets and food and everything and let's just really make this the event of the town because Whangarei needs something. Yeah and the, like this this key is perfect for it. It is, it's, it's like... perfect and the whole river is all maritime stuff and people mm -hmm. don't know that and it's just so rad that we're going to bring attention to it and mm -hmm. eventually it will go all the way up the river hopefully to the other marinas and wow. then out to Tutukaka. That is cool. Yeah, really and cool. is it mostly kiwi boats, wooden boats, like what's your focus? It's a bit of everything so mainly the dock down here is uh, all um, locally made boats so in Whangarei so showing off what we've done in the past mm -hmm. and yeah big old boats they're from all over the show really mm -hmm. yeah. yeah lots of gorgeous classic motor launches and yeah, the power yachts and... amazing stories as well like they're all fishing boats and stuff like that and just been all over the show and pilot boats and rescue boats and stuff like that awesome fantastic yeah. and um yeah how do you feel about it now that it's like right on the oh my gosh. starts tomorrow i'm just stressing there's so much like <laughs> finer tuning things to do today but yeah mm -hmm. no it's gonna be amazing and if the weather is like this it's just gonna draw a crowd yeah it is stunningly beautiful yeah but the first one it's just like we don't know what we're organizing so <laughs> yeah 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 i think yeah i think it's gonna be fantastic so. yeah <clears throat> and now the the tucker's about to head in under the bridge i'm gonna hop in the dinghy and go down and uh watch that that should be interesting it'll be a tight fit yeah for sure <clears throat> exactly awesome. with outgoing tide. <laughs> Thanks for organizing this. <laughs> no worries. Stoked. Enjoy. There once was a ship that put to sea and the name of that ship was the Billy O.T. The winds blew harder, bowed it down, blow me bully boys blow. Soon may the weatherman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the timing is done, we'll take our leave and go. She had not been two weeks from shore and down on her right will board. The captain called all hands and swore to take that will in tow. Soon may the weatherman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the time is done, we'll take our leave and go. Da 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 No whale was peed and the captain's 
mind was not on free But he belonged to the whales and the screech He took that ship in tow Soon may the weatherman come To bring the sugar and tea and rum One day when the tongue is So let's hear a little bit about the little steamboat I'm about to go on. So the SS Pukki is looked after by the New Zealand Maritime Museum in Auckland and she's 151 years old. What did you say was 18 what? 1872. <laughs> so, um, so she comes out once a year for her general clean and maintenance and she's coming up to her 10 year refurbishment of all the valves and everything next year. Amazing, I'm so excited to go on it. Let's go check it out. oldest in the southern hemisphere yep. and in the 10 oldest working steamboats in the world. Uh, yeah, 1872 it was built as a tug originally in the Kaipara Harbour pulling um, brass of carry on oh, yeah. to the sawmill by the Thompson brothers. Um, so it would have run on carry scrap from the mill originally, it wouldn't have run on coal um, or whatever whatever wood floated by, you know, it would never run out of fuel for these things. It'd burn anything and it uh, works just like a large, large scale steamship. It's a closed cycle condensing system, like a big steamship would have been. Um, so this is the boiler, where all the energy comes from. Fire in the bottom here. There, burning on coal. The boiler is a vertical fire tube boiler. It's 51 tubes about this diameter, and run from the top to the top. It takes the hot gases to the, to the smoke box at the top and out the top. Um, steam comes down here, this is our throttle here, so this is fast and slow on there. And you probably know <laughs> you probably notice there's no chuff 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 coming out the top like a locomotive, and that's because we are recycling the water. So once the steam comes out of the engine here, there's about 16 feet of copper pipe on the outside of the hull, and that acts as a condenser. So the hot steam condenses back into water, and it pumps on the front of the engine here to send it back into the boiler. <laughs> same water going round and round and round in a circuit. So we only use typically about 10 litres of water a day to make up what comes out the whistle, leaks, that sort of thing. But generally, at sea it makes sense to recycle it because fresh water is a precious commodity at sea. And you don't want to burn salt water in the boiler. You don't want to use salt water in the boiler because the salt gets left behind. Only the water boils off. So the, the very early boilers did. Um, and they use seawater in them because they were very, very low pressure boilers. Um, it's actually less pressure than it takes to blow up the party balloon, a lot less. And they used the vacuum, really, to run the engine. Um, they would condense the steam on the other side of the engine with a, a salt water spray to make the steam collapse. And so the steam pressure on the other side of the piston was probably only one or two feet aside, but that was enough to... So that's why their pistons were like four feet in diameter, they were massive. You know. So, these are typically about half the local blacksmiths of the piston. Nothing about them. No, I mean this one I've, I've, I've rebuilt this twice in the last 10 years. Coming up for another one next year. 
Cold molded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, the only way to preserve it. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when they did that too, and then after that, we went around with pitched all the seams on the insides, all the ledges are pitched, mm -hmm. so that the water can't gather on the strings and all that sort of thing. So it's got no wells in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but because it's in the water all the time, it's pretty good. You know, it's, a, it's the fresh water's the killer for these things. Yeah. You know, as long as you've got salt water in the village, it'll last forever. Mm -hmm. the fresh water's the killer. Thanks so much for the ride. Fantastic. Oh, no, what a shit. What yeah, a yeah. Shit. That's a groovy old thing. So what, what boat are we on right now? Uh, P38, Pacific 38. And, uh, what's the name? Mojo 3. And then what's y'all's names? Uh, on Dean. On Dean, I'm Sven. And that's I'm Ian. Ian. Yeah. And you have a P38 as well? I've got a P38. Lisa mm -hmm. Mai just right behind there. us there, yeah. And then what, what year is your boat? I'm in 1976. 76. And yeah. what year is this boat? 76. Oh, cool. Yeah. And they were both made here in Pongare. Popped out, yeah. Yep. If you look over there, you'll see the boat sheds on the other side. Uh huh. The second one along, that's set back a bit from the river. Mm -hmm. That's where all these boats were built. Oh, cool. And it's and how? What's the construction of these vessels? Uh, solid GRP. Mm hmm Hull and decks. Yep. Nice. So, what made you guys choose this boat? Made us choose this boat. The value for money. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. No, we just we did want. We've always had a wish list around our boats, mm -hmm. and we've never achieved many of them. And one of them was a tiller steer boat. Yeah. Just uh, just for simplicity. Um, and like my, uh, one of them was uh, encapsulated keel. Um, we've had an encapsulated keel before. It's no problem. We've had bolt-on keel before, and it's uh, can be expensive in our old boats to. Um, draw the bolts out and uh, so yeah we're happy with the encapsulated keel 
and be happy with an old boat. We definitely were looking for something in the 70s, maybe the early 80s, where they were still glassing boats pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. um, with this one, we've done all the seacocks and we've taken out some plugs and they, they're really thick. So, uh, mm -hmm. solid glass. It's quite, quite resin rich compared to what they would do today. I don't know if that's good or bad. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, we, we, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that ticked a lot of the boxes, and they, in fact, it was, it's pretty much on the maximum length that I'm happy with because we, we uh, we're going to be sailing the boat for a long time. Yeah, and um, it's still everything's manageable. We, mm -hmm. we we lose any systems, we can do everything by hand. Yeah, or, or, or pulley, or we'll we'll we'll, we'll be all right. Makes it, uh, make do with it, mm -hmm. um, and sailing with it as well. Even if you lose, you know, if you don't have the engine, it's quite capable of sailing in and out everywhere. Mm -hmm. and, uh, when you can, we sail off the anchor, we sail onto the anchor. Yeah. Um, yeah, other things are, um, because they're old boats, I don't want to, we didn't want to buy a boat with a lot of systems and a lot of electronics, because basically if they're old, you're going to trash the whole boat, so you don't want to be buying something that uh, somebody thinks has got value. Yeah. So this boat was, um, didn't have much in it. And it actually still doesn't have much in it. It's pretty yeah, simple. That's the way to it's, go. It's got a VHF in it at the moment, yeah. mm -hmm. and we—I don't even know if we—we we did uh, wire for a plotter, but I don't know if we'll end up. I mean, I've sailed up. nine thousand miles with an iPad. Yeah, and we're kind of thinking of we might be going down that route yeah, as well. Yeah, it's totally doable. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Nowadays, it's, uh, it's I think so I think it's, everything's changed yeah. very, uh, a lot since, uh, since I lost. Yeah, uh, we could. The only problem is I seem to run out of power at the wrong time. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I keep mine plugged in yeah. all the time. But yeah, corrosion yeah. with the cords, I found, has been the biggest issue. Yeah, okay. With like ocean yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like I'll, when I get to places with like an Apple store, I'll buy like five cords. Yeah. And I just, yeah, any sign of like silliness, yeah, I just yeah. throw out that one and put in the new cord. And have you got... Anything to secure yours? Do you use? Velcro I have a, or? I have like a ram mount on my nav station, and I have one in, uh, right oh. above my, like on my turtle, oh, so that, that I can like sit. Yeah, it's like you can, it's modular. Yeah. You can just pull it off and put it away if you yeah. want. Oh, okay. So I can like steer with it right there, and yeah, I have a yeah, plug yeah, mounted yeah, yeah. in the cockpit. That's pretty neat, yeah. yeah. So yeah. and it's served me very well. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So can we take a peekaboo oh, down yeah. below? Uh, yep. Off you go. Andy, do you want to get down there? Ooh, it's so nice and clean, wow. <laughs> oh yeah, I love how simple it is. Oh, what a nice seating area. Fantastic. Yeah, oh, sorry. What's the beam on this boat? Uh, what's the beam? Three point? Three point four meters or something like that. Wow. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, hello. Yes, of Day two of the Fangare Maritime Festival. Yesterday was going off. It was like 7,000, over 7,000 people attended. Today it's been a little quieter, but still steady stream of people. So really huge success. Asked Car yesterday what she thought was gonna happen, and she expected 5,000 over two days. So they blew that out of the water by 2 p.m. yesterday. Super stoked for them. It's been an amazing festival.
Congratulations to the organizers of the Whangarei Maritime Festival. What an amazing first year. If you're around New Zealand, make sure you check it out again next year. You can find a link to their website down in the description of this video. I had a really incredible time and loved seeing all the beautiful boats. And getting to ride on the little steamboat was a highlight for me. If you enjoy the content on this channel and would like to contribute, you can consider joining the Patreon crew. Thanks for watching. Fair winds until next time.